Hey, what's up, Day Slayers? Today we are wrapping up another glorious week of jiu-jitsu coming back from failure. And this week uh, we covered the dogfight and the electric chair. Classic, classic Eddie Bravo um, jiu-jitsu. So we're going to get right into my shark tank that I did. We're going to transition over here to, just bear with me here, to my match against all you Day Slayers. All right. So first we got Casey matching up. All right, putting on my headgear, feeling good. Slap of hands. Oh, immediately grab quarter guard with Black Mamba here. I'll let you watch a little bit. Notice me checking his bicep right here. A little battle for quarter guard. Electric double underhooks, looks familiar. Whip. Heisman in the armpit. And then I build up and get the sweep. So a victory for this case was sweeping. So we're gonna break down that little electric chair sweep. All right, so we are gonna go back to right here. So this, okay, look at our elbow position. Okay, once I'm in quarter shell, okay, where I'm dealing with his knee, uh, quarter guard, I'm working on my mini stomp there, I'm focused on my elbow position on, my, on the far side. He's trying to dig an underhook, and I'm trying to get the tip of my elbow inside his armpit. Okay, so I need inside elbow position. Once I do that, I'm going to... Right there, then I can get my underhook. And I have my lockdown. You couldn't see the mini stomp there. And then the whip, it's all just legs going le left to right there. And I build up, all right? That was a pretty straightforward electric chair. Let's move on very quickly. I got Michael Ozius here, Ozius. Grab my quarter shell, he's digging for an underhook. He goes to pass, but boom, gets a dog fight. Let's see where this takes us. There. Put in my butterfly staple. And we finish with baseball bat. All right, I didn't want to get into twister battles and such, so that was just, we ended a baseball bat there. Okay, so let's go back. First thing I want to point out is the, the transition to dogfight. So right here, Michael's intelligent enough to di start digging for some kind of separation between my elbow and my ribs, but I'm not giving it to him. Okay, so at a certain point, he just decides to commit his hips and do like a baseball slide to, to free his foot right here. And I couldn't control it very well, so boom. Right there, I timed I timed a shift of his body north and I let go of his foot. So right here, elbow bump, elbow shift, but his foot's gonna slip, I'm okay with that because I'm not gonna be pinned on my back. He's too, his body weight is distributed too far north as you can follow my cursor going. Okay, so that allows me to get up to my knees Okay, and then I recollect the foot. You can't see it here, but I'm battling for a two-on-one uh, of his right leg. All right, I'm just posting on my forehead and my shoulder while I, while I work on the legs. Okay, now I have my now I have my leg curl and my staple inside of his leg. Um, if you know that, then you know it. If you don't, uh, we'll have to look at it in another video because you can't see it here. Okay, now that staple here, I'm just waiting to press the red button. That hand is the red button for me to put in my far side twister hook. All right, we're gonna go back to that twister hook here. Okay, as soon as I put my right hand on the mat, that means it's go time. And I jump the left leg. I'm gonna reach my foot all the way inside. Shoelaces hooking the inside of his calf there. I'm reaching my shoelace, reaching my shoelaces, 
I shift my hips across his hips, not behind him. That's a big key. You gotta shift across or else you'll fall off your opponent and you'll end up back on your back if they have a strong wizard. All right, and then I fall straight back into baseball bat. I just turn the wizard into a baseball bat. Wrist control right here. And then I just extract my arm. And notice I put in my lotus here, flaring my knees to the ground, heels to butt. All right, let's move on. Next we got Jeff, he doesn't want to give me that foot. Sounds kind of weird to say, but I really want the foot. Playing a little hard to get, and I get the foot right there. And now I'm all shelled up. He's smart enough to battle for wrist control, head position. I'm just gonna let you guys watch a little bit. Get my lock down. Double underhooks. There, battle for foot position. I go half flex. All right, let's go back a few beats. Let's go back. So right here, Jeff knows the game. He's trying to look for one of three things, okay? He either needs a near side cross face on my head right here, okay? He either, or he can get a far side underhook underneath my armpit here, or he can drive his forehead underneath my chin and pin me. Either way, with any of those three, he's trying to put me flat on my back, okay? So the way uh, he opts for the head position. So if you look right here, he's gonna drop his head down right there so I I frame and I use that opportunity to also get my mini stomp there let's look at that mini stomp one more time so as he goes for head position I shelf his knee on my stomach look at my hand here pause right here boom looking to shelf his knee on my stomach okay and then I go for my mini stomp right here extend Okay, he hides from the lockdown, so I'm gonna have to dig for it a little bit. Get the lockdown, once again, he's looking for that cross face. I'm always blocking. I always have my hand to my near side ear. All right, let's keep going, keep going. We got some little background music, that's okay. Dig for my electric double underhooks. Fighting to get deeper and deeper so I can get up on my knees here. Build up on my knees. Okay, he frees his foot momentarily, so I have to use a little bit of fancy feet to get it back. Look, see I dig with my other foot there, and then I go half flex. Okay. Moving on. Now we got C Ray in the house. He doesn't want to give me that leg either. Each one of them are seeing that leg. They want to be able to dance, and I'm not letting them dance. Once again, I'm using my, you can call it a rhino horn, where I'm putting my head, my hand to my forehead pretty much, just blocking that cross face. Got my lock down. Initiating my electric chair as you see, and untie and pass. All right, I wanna point out the lockdown whip here. Okay, so what often happens is with a big guy and an intelligent grappler like C-Ray, uh, I get to my lockdown and I protect my head, but it's very hard to get the far side underhook. I'm trying to reach my left hand for the far side underhook, but he's distributing his weight very well on that bubble over there. Okay, so my upper body is just not going to win that battle. I'm not strong enough. Okay, I'm trying to dig underneath here, but he's just not letting me. His head is bearing down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the power of my legs, my lockdown, where I'm controlling him from foot to knee to hip pretty much. Okay, and when I whip him to the left in a moment, see I can't get that underhook. He's putting too much pressure, so I use the whip to the left right here. 
and that gets him off me. That lets me get underneath him. Just subtle movement. Let's look at that subtle movement again, right? That whip right there, that gets me the, the underhook. Then I scoop the leg, I keep reaching this deeper, my underhook deeper, and then I whip to the left again. It's all in the whip. And he goes right over. All right. Moving on. Next we got Milton. All right, let's look at this real quick. They don't, he doesn't want to give me that foot either. Use a little bit of wrist control, and then I secure the foot. We're going to watch this here. Playing a little bit of possum. A little bit of possum, wrist control. I should know right here while we're waiting for this battle. Um, dog, this game of quarter guard, I'm doing analysis right here, meaning my role is analysis. I'm just doing one part of a role. This isn't necessarily the best strategy for all of your game, but in order to, to develop your dogfight electric chair game, you do want to approach with this quarter guard mentality so you can work on it. I'm just working for my mini stomp here. I go straight to dogfight because he is too aggressive in quarter guard and I get the pass. Okay, so at a certain point, they're, it's like they're resting on a bubble right here. Okay, at a certain point, if you're not getting anywhere to get them to, to lock down, okay, you just got to know dogfight will probably work. So I just bump him with my knee behind his hamstring. Bump. And I get to top position. All right, we are moving on. This is a fun one. Just as this plays, I'm going to plug in my laptop. Let you watch. So you see what's happening here. He's he's behaving like a uh, he's behaving like a wrestler. Where just because I got to dogfight, he's not gonna give up position. He's, he's not gonna let me flank his body. He's just gonna stand up. So it's gonna happen again. Where I'm trying to get around and get up to my knees, but each time I do that, he stands up and I just have a body lock. Now I should have just wrestled him down here, but I wanted to specifically work on work on the dogfight and electric chair positions. Okay, because right, right here when he stands up, I can take his back, I can do a rear takedown. But I'd rather just drag him down to the ground. So right here, I could, I should just come up. Anytime you have double unders, you can tackle somebody down very easily right here. Okay, but I'm just gonna sit to my butt keep the foot and play dog I drag him down and each time I'm getting lower behind him and I'm gonna have access to his back right here all right moving on again we have Karen going for double under passing right here to negate to negate the quarter guard, very intelligent move. So I just have to directly resist it and then I get the foot. I just let her pass the legs over and I grab the foot. Now I'm all shelled up here and she's distributing a lot of weight forward. Right here I see her head position mainly. And I can choose to come up. Right, this is a kind of a funny moment here. Okay, so I'm struggling in this dogfight position with Karen, where basically what I'm trying to do is post on this leg, my right leg, and get a knee tap on her far knee and drive, drive into her. Okay, but right at this moment, uh, one of Karen's teammates, Jeff, tell, yells for her to drive into me, 
And I take that as a cue to go for the half flex. So he says, drive right on here. And then I decide to roll um, because I know she's going to follow his instructions. She's a good student. So she rolls and I take her over. So that was a little bit of bad sportsman behavior on my part. But hey, you got to do what works. All right. We're going to skip all the way to 10 minutes here because Rob and I dance around a little bit and it takes a while. Let's see how I got quarter drum. I can go back. Yeah, so I'm reaching. Finally, I secure quarter guard, but I'm not letting him turn. Blocking his knee. Mini stomp. He goes for a front headlock. Okay, so I gotta address, always address front headlocks, you gotta be able to breathe. Almost going to a deep pass situation here, but I'm not going to. He's going back to the front headlock. So I gotta turtle up, recollect the leg. Right here, now I get my body lock right here. Knee tap, drive, and always pass the opposite side. All right, so let's go back to this front headlock situation. Okay, so he rests me up pretty good where he's getting leverage on the back of my neck and he's able to free his foot. You see him pushing out his foot. Okay, so I can't stay flat on my back here or else he'll pass my guard or guillotine me. Okay, so I gotta come up to turtle, okay, and keep a check on his outside leg, because he wants to spin to my back, possibly also. I keep a check on his leg, and I'm gonna pass his leg to my own leg. Okay, so I'm gonna re-pull half right here. So this arm is gonna pass his leg off to this leg. Let's watch here. And the leg goes, it's swung around right there. And I re-pull with a deep underhook now. This hand's still protecting my neck. Okay, you always wanna keep a check on the neck here. Then I connect. Once I'm getting around his body, I'm up to my knees. I'm controlling his foot. I'm up with my body lock, S grip, knee tap. And then right here, he still has my neck wrapped, but I'm still respecting the guillotine. Okay, it's my job now to pass my legs, my body to the opposite side of his guillotine. You see that right there. And then I'm safe. If he held on to it, I could bomb through the choke. All right, moving on. Now we got Joey. All right, we're going to skip ahead a little bit to 11.35. We danced a little bit here for too long. I grabbed quarter guard, as you could imagine. Starting from quarter guard here. He's trying to free his leg. So in this match, you're going to watch here. All right, so that was an interesting situation right there. I used sort of a wrestling wedging technique. Okay, so he wasn't giving very, very much access to the body lock. He was staying very far back and kind of tight with his elbow here. Okay, so I had to start kind of going down his body and attacking his leg. So I just grab onto his leg here. Okay, and he's attempting to kind of stand and free himself. So I got to follow him staying on his leg okay because if i swam up to a body lock i'd lose him most likely he's a wrestler he'd scramble up and out see right there i felt like i was losing him so i had to come up now now my job is to drive my trap my left shoulder trap into the back of his knee and just follow him okay it's a very good attachment right there and i can come on top but i re-pulled guard because i didn't want to work on wrestling i wanted to work on dogfight and electric chair didn't want to show you guys wrestling stuff. Wrestling analysis is for a different day. You can only play the dogfight electric chair game. So now we are going to watch this a little bit. While we wait, just want to say hope you guys are having a great day. Got some training in already, or maybe you're going to train tonight. Hopefully use some of this stuff all right right here we're back in action in our quarter guard position okay mini stomp attempt and I get my lockdown 
just want to show a little detail here okay if your opponent stands up in your quarter guard okay so I grabbed quarter and he looks to stand up and post his far leg my job I need to hook his leg because he's gonna do a back step or he's gonna try to cross over okay I need to control create more attachment on his body okay so I hook that leg right there I'm careful of the cross face I know he can cross face me here I'm open but I'm working on my mini stomp in the meantime. All right. We're going to get to our electric chair in just a few seconds. Whipping him back and forth, digging for a deeper and deeper body with that tight waist right there. It's always trying to get that tight waist deeper. He's really sprawling, but my whip takes him away. All right, one thing I want to point out here is the T formation. Super important for electric chair. Okay, so once I get the whip and I know I'm taking him over, okay, right here, now he's fight. The fight is for him to keep this leg on my bicep and get parallel. My job is to get his leg from his bicep, from my bicep to my trap and get to a figure T formation. Okay, so right here, I start my figure T formation by putting a bottom side thumb post in his far armpit. Okay, then once he's on my shoulder, I go for, you can't see it here, I have a thumb post in his near armpit now. I'm going to take this away to build up on my elbow here. So I'm pushing him away. He's stretched out. His leg is controlled. And he just pulls can see his bottom position and I pass. That's kind of something you'll notice with electric chair. You can't necessarily force the submission. Um, the submission usually comes if they're doggedly staying on top. All right, now we got James here. This one also took a minute. He was pretty, okay. actually I gave him two chances here because he went pretty fast. First. Things first, he's very forward, and I bump him pretty quickly. Just go on top. Okay, so that wasn't, that was fairly obvious. He didn't distribute enough of his weight on me, so I could just get up to my knees. And right here. Once again. All right, that was a very interesting thing I'm going to point out after we conclude. Actually, I'm going to point it out now. Okay, so what I used right there was he defended the half plex pretty well. So I'm shelled up here. Okay, he wouldn't let me go to dogfight, so I go to half plex. But then he switches his hips very well and balances. Okay. So that's still an opportunity for me. Now what I can do is secure knee line and get my lockdown. See that? So let's watch once again, watch my feet here. I half flex him, I only have his ankle right now. Okay, and then once he goes back, now I have lockdown with his whole leg. Watch that one more time. Half flex and then secure lockdown. All right, so I gained something. Even though he defended well and I wanted to take him over, I saw it wasn't working, so I took my lock down because his leg was elevated and he wasn't too heavy on it. Working to get up. Once again, he's being stubborn. He's good at distributing his weight. Kind of understands the game after doing this for a few weeks. Okay, I kind of go to reach down for that second leg. Re oh, now we got to go to the other one. So let's just transition here, full video, full screen. Recollect the foot there. Okay, so I lost his foot, use my hand to recollect. Little quick and dirty method. This isn't necessarily, this isn't very technical here, me just holding onto his leg, but sometimes you just gotta do what's, use what you have. All right, I'm just kind of controlling his leg. He's really trying to squirm his foot out. Sit up, dog fight, body lock. All right, and then I use a thumb post half flex. 
All right, so at this point, let's just go back right here. He's really just wiggling this fight. He has active hips. He's good at limp legging out. Okay, so next time he limp legs, I take my hand and I control his knee right there. And then it's just bent. And then it's sort of just a bench press to the sky with his one leg. It's not so much a bench press because uh, you you don't really want to teach muscle moves in jiu-jitsu, but he has his momentum going, and I just have I have an attachment to his leg here. We'll watch that one more time. Two more times. S grip, lose the leg, throw him over. All right, so. Um, really want to point out the T formation of the electric chair just to review a little bit. Okay, getting to that T using our thumb posts. In fact, let me get to a full, let me see if I can get to a full screen here. All right, so we want to use our thumb posts and different attachments to control our opponent. And um, other thing is the two, the two dilemmas. Your opponent is sitting on a bubble in a dogfight. They're either, you know, it's too hard to explain. Uh, you guys can ask me about it later or you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but basically you have, you know, there's an electric chair dogfight dilemma for your opponent. Just trust it and uh, know that you have two options. All right, so um, that is electric chair dogfight. If you want to round out your game, your white belt, your blue belt, you're not sure what holes you have in your game, look down below and there is a... Uh, Blue Belt Roadmap Guide. It's like a checklist. It's a, it, uh, it will let you uh, basically start just like seeing what you know and then seeing what you don't know and what you need to work on. Um, so it doesn't take very long. And there's also some other really helpful self-defense uh, worksheets in there and uh, things that will just make your jiu-jitsu better. Because that's why I'm here and uh, that's why I need to get better uh, on this platform communicating with you guys. So uh, keep... Keep letting me know how I can help. All right. Have a good day, guys.